Hi guys, how are y'all today? Say hi, say where you're from. Your neighbor may be stitching next to you or embroidering or crafting. So um, we're gonna continue what I started on this morning on Brothers Facebook Live show, kind of to give you the setup of what I did in software wise to be able to get started on the other part. Um, if you did not see what we did this morning, hold on a second, let me see. If I can share something, we'll share that screen and we'll pop over. This is the actual, this is what we created this morning on Brothers Facebook Live. So a lot of this I did in the software. So as if I scroll over here, obviously the names I set up in the software, I set up the H E and the D and the of the, and the class without the heads. And I did the heads on, um, the actual uh, scan and cut machine itself. So if you didn't watch this morning, you you'll see how the whole thing was constructed basically and the different cutting parts. But today, this afternoon, I wanted to show you the different parts of the software. So I'm going to stop sharing that and go back, go back in. Am I frozen, Karen? Shouldn't be. Uh, but no telling, you know, y'all know how that goes. It does say my connection is unstable. Huh. Maybe having internet problems this afternoon. I am wired, so it should not be. I don't know what to tell you. Hopefully we'll be able to, you'll be able to hear me and see me. Um, if not, we'll try it another day. So um, let's start in Canvas Workspace and see what we can do. So let me share screen and take myself off and go back over here. So what did I do? Let's bring up Canvas Workspace here. Am I, am I good now? I mean, I mean, my internet connection does say, there it goes, it's bump, bumping back up now. Something must be happening in the hood in, or in, I should say in the burrow. Now, now it shows that I've got good internet. You all should be seeing me, correct? Okay, good deal. All right, so how did I set that up? I grabbed my text tool and I came over here and I typed in H-E-A-D. I went ahead and typed in the whole word and then I grabbed, um, which one did I do? Salmonica, I do believe is what I used. Nope. You know, guys, I, it would be really smart of me if I would write these down when I used them because it was one that was, okay, I know how to figure out which one I used. Open recent. <laughs> so let's see here. I don't want to save those changes. That's not it. Uh, well, I be danged. <laughs> I hate it when I do this. Evidently, I didn't save it. So I'm, I'm frozen again. I don't see an internet problem. So we're just going to have to figure out which, word, which one I used. H-E-A-D. I do this every time. You know, I find one I like and then I just go with it. But I'm really bad about remembering which one I used. That one right there. Aha, Brogum. So there we go. This is what I did and I made it about four inches wide. Okay. So to figure out what size my um, Mickey, Minnie, Mickey head needed to be, I typed in a single A and I resized it over the top of the A that was here and to where it was about the same size. It You don't have to be perfect on this one. It's just kind of, let's check and see, make sure we're close to it when we are. So once I've done that, I can go over to my edit button and then I can look and see, okay, so that one is 1.02 by 1.13. That's what size I need to make my Mickey head. It needs to be about 1.13. Yeah, write it down, Shirley. You are correct. I should do that, but I'm terrible about doing that. So 
that's how you figure out how tall your Mickey head needs to be is you type in your text here. You can do it on the scan and cut itself. As you saw me do that this morning, I, I resized it till it would fit in that space. But here it's a little bit more precise. You can see that I did it 1.13 and that's how tall I made my Mickey head. So then I came back in and I double tapped here, took out my A and put in two spaces. That gave me enough space for that Mickey head to go in and I was still, I had plenty of room for me to be able to split it. If you don't want to do that, you can double tap again, take out those, and then just, you'll, you'll just top off the D and put your A, your head in between the two. Okay. Does that make sense? Of the class was done the same way. So I grabbed my text tool and typed in of the and then I put class down below it and made it bigger. So I made my class a bit bigger and I changed the spacing of both of these down to like negative six, I believe. Seven looks good on that one. We'll take this one down to negative six. And I placed that right there. And then I grabbed all of this and moved it up together. Once again, um, since this is a different size, A, slightly, actually, I made my class a little bit smaller. So let's go ahead and make my class a little bit smaller here. I took my A that I had hanging out there in La La Land by itself, resized it down to see what size it is. So that one's around an inch. You can come back in and take out the A. And then just clip, keep, keep going with that. And then you can get rid of this one right here. So this right here is what you would cut out. Now, if you're smart, you'll go ahead and mirror it here on Canvas Workspace. Because if you get to the machine like I did this morning and forget, you know, it's kind of one of those things. You can't fix what you can't fix. And I, once you've cut it out, you can't fix it. You have to go back and cut it again. So then I grabbed it all. And if you have on, on Canvas Workspace, if you have the vinyl uh, auto blade kit or the um, roll feeder kit, the weeding boxes will automatically show up in here if either of those have been activated. And there you go. So there's your weeding boxes and you can simply file, export FCM and transfer that to your scan and cut machine. Now, you go over there and you would cut it out from that place, okay? So, I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. You can save it, and, and if you want to make sure you remember what your font is, go ahead and save it. Now, let's see here. So, let me go put it in for the Facebook Live projects, and we'll call this head. Oh, I already had that. So, evidently, it was there already for me, but... I didn't find it. It wasn't in my recent projects, evidently. Okay, so now let's let's just go new, and I'm not going to save that change because I deleted it. How did I make my little rectangles to cut out of my, um, and I did this fastly earlier today, to cut out my felt. I could have come in here and put in a rectangle and said, okay, I want you to be uh, let's take off maintain aspect ratio here and let's say I wanted it to be 3.5 and I wanted my height to be 2.5. I could have done that and duplicated it multiple times. Control C, Control V and, and just duplicate it. All right, so I'm going to come and grab that and then I could change my spacing to let's say we want to 0.5 apart. So that would give me all of those rectangles about the size that I want. And then I could go to the left. And if I wanted to, I could grab um, a longer mat or just simply delete these two. I decided I didn't want to have it double cut over a line or have a, I didn't want to waste fa fabric, basically. I didn't want to waste my felt. So what I did instead was I came in and grabbed my line drawing tool and drew my line the length that, that I wanted it to be. So let's say I want it to be four inches wide. So double click. You've got a line. 
copy that, control C, paste it, control V, and just continue to paste. Then I grabbed all of those. I aligned them to the left and I distributed them exactly two inches apart. So this right here, this button right here, vertical distribute. And then I grouped those guys together. So control G is your group key. And then you move them up. Now you can come in and grab that rectangle. And I'm going to have one too many. I know this just because um, I've done this a couple of times today and I can tell that if I were to make this two inches apart exactly, then my, it's going to be too large for my mat. So let me come in and take off my last line there in my layers window. Grab your rectangle drawing tool or square, either one will work, and draw yourself the space that makes it to where it's two inches on either end. So now we've got it all set up. Control G for grouping. And you can send that over to your scan and cut machine and cut perfect rectangles. Where are mine? Hold on. <clears throat> now these are a little bit bigger, but with that new rotary auto blade kit, these are my little felt rectangles. And it worked perfectly. I, I mean, it was sweet the way it works. I mean, because those lines, instead of having double cuts or instead of having space in between things, and it, I would have loved to have said, yes, that idea came to me the first time I did it. But no, the first time I did draw the rectangles and copy those. Um, but it worked lovely. And so I would, that would be my suggestion to you. That way you're not wasting anything. It's not double cutting. There's not as many chances of your material coming off of your mat. Um, if you have not, uh, and I know you guys haven't gotten the rotary blade yet, once you get that, you're going to be addicted to it for doing weird fabrics. Um, just unusual stuff that we weren't able to cut before we are able to cut now, or that we weren't able to cut without a backing or without starching it. Um, craft felt was one of those things that I just cringed when people asked me to cut because I knew it was never going to be exactly what I wanted. Or if I, if I put it on that um, fabric, Matt, it was stuck like Chuck and you had so much mess left over that it wasn't pleasant to do. So I, I really do enjoy, I have enjoyed the rotary blade. So let's see here. What else did we do? The names were pretty simple as well. And you just decide on your font. So on this one, I think I, since I was thinking more of it was school, I just came in here and I did a plain Jane font. So I did the basic default Oakland. Okay. And came in and typed them all in. The, all right, so once you've done all that, once again, I will have to tell you, you when you start thinking about this weeding box, it really and the separation. So let's say I want these to be 0.3 inches apart. Okay. So down here in the distribute in your edit menu that distribute vertically, they are now evenly spaced. Go down, put your weeding box on them. Notice how it makes slices them perfectly for me. Then I can take those and do not forget to flip them before you send them to your machine. So that is um, really key. And the project that we were doing today is so customizable for whatever you wanted to do. It, it really is fun to do. Um, you can do it for home, for a reward chart for home. You can do it for school. I made everything removable because when I had go when I was teaching school, I would have goals and those might change from day to day or week to week or class to class. So it just depended on who I was working with. And as the children get better at doing things, then yeah, my internet is showing up that there's an issue today and I don't know why. Um, we must be having a Comcast issue. We've had tons of rain here. So, Hopefully, hopefully it's not too terrible, guys. 
because uh, I truly don't know what to do. I'm hardwired. There's, it's bad internet day. Um, <clears throat> if you come back, so Mary, if you come back and watch a lot of the um, Facebook lives that I've done in the past year and a half, there are quite a few that have Canvas workspace in them. Actually, I pretty much touch on that almost every time. So just uh, check that out. Now, I, Karen, I don't have a ring. Nothing else is using my internet. This is the only thing using my internet today. So uh, it, it's just the internet's bad. If I hit the refresh button, guys, you're gone. So um, I'm cable. I'm hardwired to Comcast. <laughs> just to give them a hard time. I don't know what to tell you guys. <laughs> All right. Let's um, talk about New Brother Software again. Last week, I kind of had to give you BES Blue, the quick and down and dirty version of it. So I'll dive a little bit further into that. As I said last week, and I cannot repeat this enough, if you have BES4, you do not need to purchase BES Blue. You have everything that's in it, okay, and more. It's um, BES Blue is a step below BES4. So I don't want you to be mad at me or your dealer. So just keep that in mind. BES Blue is a step down. Um, so it's it's great software, don't get me wrong, but it will not have power packs added to it. It does not have wireless and it does not, it's not going to have, so you're not going to get your nap control and things. So just keep keep having that and just understand that. But everything that I'm going to do today, if you've got BES4, you can do it in that. So this won't be a, it's not a waste of time if you've got BES4. Let me share my screen again. Um, so Betty, the Rotary Auto Blade is brand new and you can get it for um, your SDX 230DX for sure. It is the um, vinyl auto blade is a vinyl auto blade kit and you can purchase it for sure as well for yours. Um, Karen, no, I have used that rotary auto blade for fabric. I've used it for paper. I've used it for tissue paper. Hold on while I'm answering questions. I may as well show you what we've cut with it. So this is tissue paper. I could never have cut this with any other blade simply because I, first of all, to get it to cut, I would have had to stick it to a sticky mat. Then it would drag it, which is going to tear it. So the rotary auto blade allows it to just glide over it. This is crepe paper. Same thing. Um, before, if you had tried to cut it, since it's got grooves in it, it doesn't all touch the surface. In order to get it there, you'd have to bray it down and that would take out the texture. And once again, it's easily torn. So the dragging motion of the blade instead of the rolling motion would make this one more challenging to cut as well. Um, so it's not just for fabrics. You can use it for a variety of reasons. All right, so BES Blue. Let's see what we've got. So last week I told you that it has your all of the same text tools that we have. You have normal text path text, follow path text. And if you've never seen this software before, this is one of the easiest software programs that I know of to do text with. So let's say we wanted to do your name. You type it in, press enter, or excuse me, click away from it to apply it. There's my text. Now, if I want to change my font, I'm going to come and click on the down arrow here. Use the arrow key on my keyboard, or you can scroll through, but I like using the down arrow and the up arrow on my keyboard because then if you notice here to the left, I get a preview of it. So that is the way I choose to do this. Guys, if we continue to have internet issues, we'll just pick it up next week. So you select your font, you click apply, and it's automatically applied it. My sound is gone. Let me check. There's no way. Audio. Um, no, guys, I've got sound, so I don't know. It's got to be an internet issue, internet, internet issue. I don't know what to tell you. Um, if, like I said, if we continue to have issues, I'll just, we'll just stop and do it another day. 
3D draw allows you to view your use it real see it in realistic view. If you want to change that to circle text, you can right mouse you can click on your text tool, right mouse click on it and say circle text and it automatically applies it to the circle. So you'll notice, let me zoom out so you can see that. There you go. There's my circle text. If I want circle text on the top and the bottom, if I put my cursor at the end, I can just press the enter key and type in my last name or whatever you wanted to say. So there we go. There's my text. Um, to change your spacing, you can simply go into the properties window over here and you'll see the word spacing. If you want them closer together, type in a negative number and press apply or enter. Either one will work. If you want to see what it, just certain parts of it do, if you need just need to change one letter, you can take the little diamond. Let me zoom in so you can see that. If I grab my text tool again and see that little diamond right there, that allows you to adjust the spacing between one letter and then one behind it. So it only does those two letters when you're playing with it. Whereas spacing in the properties does it for the entire, whatever text stream you've got there. Spacing here only applies to what you're changing. And that that's how you can tighten up or loosen things out. The nice thing is it, is it does stay centered. All right, so let's come here. I'm going to delete that. Uh, you're going to have moments of freeze again. It looks like Comcast is having issues again. Path text is where you click and you select a path. So let's say we want to go on an arced path. You click on, ah, fiddle of sticks. Path text. And why is that not working for me? Path text. Maybe it's down there and I'm just not seeing it. Apply. There it is. Yep. Down in the bottom of the screen. So there it is. There's your path. It's ready to go. So Karen, I have nothing. Uh, the only thing using my internet today is this. So I uh, I don't know what's going on. There's nothing streaming. There's no nest. There's no anything. It is simply the internet here in Murfreesboro today. That's all I can tell you. Um, follow path text is different. When I click on it, I choose a path. So let's say I want to do this little heart right here. I'm going to type in, I love you. And if I just have, I love you by itself, it's going to look like when I click off of this, to apply it, it's going to look like I just threw up the words, I love you. Makes no sense, makes no shape, makes no anything, right? Okay. But if you repeat that, so let's say I repeat this a few times. Uh, and I'm doing this all in my properties window. Now this is going to be just jumbled. But let's change that to a small font. So there's a font category filter and I can choose small fonts. Let me choose one of my pretty small fonts here. Let's go petite and apply that. You'll notice how now you can actually tell that that is a heart shape. The words go around the shape. And if you need to adjust any of your text, come back into your text tool here and let's zoom in on the one I want to adjust. So do you see how my little L here is stuck underneath there? If I want the L not stuck, I can rotate it, take it, and drop it down there. So the rotation tools are on the corner of it. The little circles are your rotation tool. This, the squares are your resizing tool. And the little square in the center, the orange square, or it's blue when it starts, allows you to move it off of the path. There is no, um, what am I trying to say? There is no little adjustment diamond that you can do on that particular one. It is, it is what it is, but that is the way that you can play with it. So let me share, share the screen again. So let's see here. There you go. So now you've got, I love you all the way around that heart. And that's what follow path text does. So, all right, let's delete that one. 
And vertical text, I think, is pretty obvious. Your text is going to go straight up and down. Monogram text, we have um, 12 decor monogram fonts. And then we have four additional fonts. So if I come up here and I go up to my decor monograms, these only show up when you have a, the monogram tool being used. The first decor monograms, 1 through 11, are the old style, okay? Um, decor monogram number 12, however, is that lovely circle monogram that everybody likes. So it actually, when it says decor monograms, that means it has a decoration that goes around the outside edge of it that you can apply to it. There are other monogram fonts, however. Abigail monogram is one of those, and it is a really pretty monogram. We also have, I'm looking for it here, Fancy Runs. And this is, this is a triple stitch monogram, and it sews out absolutely gorgeous, especially on um, the leather or pleather bags. It's a great one for those. Intertwined monogram is another one. This one is gorgeous. I've got it on a couple of caps. And then modern angles is the other, the fourth one of the um, ones that are not listed under decor. This one, however, you'll notice decor highlights. It has decor. So even though it's not under the decor monogram list, it does have decors. So that's your monogram text tool. Now, can you use other monograms, other type text styles besides the ones that are for monograms? Yes, you can. They're just not going to be that monogram style. It's just going to be a little bit different. Okay. Let me delete that and let's come back into our next tool. The next one is your step text tool. And this one's going to take, let me put in. As you can see, it basically steps the text down. Now, what you can do with this one is you can change the line angle. So, right, the default angle is 45. Let's say you wanted that at 60 degrees. You'll notice it's a much steeper angle. Um, let's pick to a different font so you may be able to see this a little bit better. How about potpourri? So, I'm going to zoom out. There you go. Um, if I go less... Let's say we go 25 degrees, you're not going to have a steep of, of an angle. If you want to go to where it's angling upward, you do a negative number. And that, that one angles upward. So that one's one of those things that's kind of fun to play with as well. All of the text styles can be changed to another style by with the text tool by right mouse clicking on it and saying, change to that style. So I just changed to spiral text. Let's zoom out. Um, my spiral's not very tight. So if I want my spiral to be tighter, I'm going to come and find my little icon. There it is. This little black dot allows you to make it go tighter. Let's add some text to that. Let's say I love you to the moon and back. Notice how it's now it spirals around it. And that allows you to keep playing with it. Um, you can change the direction of the spiral. So if you wanted it to look more like this, you can certainly do that. That orange circle allows you to rotate that text. You want a different color? Pick a different color. These are your color tiles that you have available to you. These are the colors that are listed that you're using in your design. All of these are your thread palettes. The little tic-tac-toe board is where you select your different thread palettes. You'll notice that nine out of ten times I'm using the Brother Embroidery thread palette because it has my applique colors and there's only 63 colors to scroll through. So I don't have to go keep hunting for a lot. I don't care if it's color 101 or not. That's my personal opinion, but uh, I mean, I know that there other people are different. What did I not get to last week? I did not get to alpha mapping. So alpha mapping is available in this particular program. What is alpha mapping? It's turning purchased key, por, purchased embroidery letter designs into keyboard lettering. So if I come down through here, 
these are my lowercase letters. These are my upper. So I'm going to come and grab all of my uppercase letters here. Hold the shift key down. And now I'm going to say auto. No, oh, I do have to say new font. New font. We'll call this Now I can say auto. Oh, okay. So this is not going to let me map it automatically because of the, the naming convention in it. If it's named A, B, C, D, and E without extra characters in it, you can simply map it. If not, you need to start with your letter M. All right. And then all you have to do is come in and find the letters that you want and drag them over. Um, if it's a letter that should be ascending or descending, you do have to adjust that yourself. None of these should have to have that just yet. Once I get to my lowercase, they will. Actually, my J. I may want my J to be below. So, no, and I may want my, eh, your G, you may or may not want it to be below the line. Up to you, up to your visual, what, what's your visual preference? I don't remember what it's supposed to be default was, but you simply drag them over. And once they're there, you can use them as keyboard lettering. I've already done the M because you should always start with your M as it's usually the largest character in the character map. That's why they set it as a reference letter letter. That is what your spacing between your letters is based off of. Let's see here. We're almost done. I'll do a few of my lowercase letters, but not a ton of them here. All right, so there's all of my uppers. Now we're ready for lowercase, and those were towards the top up here. So once again, you just simply take and drag them. I'm going to do a descending letter here in just a second so you can see what that would be. So see how that little swirl is at the bottom of that? I would probably make my D part on my line and the swirl go below it. That's how you make one descend. You just simply drag it down or you can type in a negative number. My F would need to be below that baseline. And that's what, I mean, that's really what you're looking at, the baseline. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and we'll act like we've got them all mapped because this is like watching paint dry if you're not doing it. So I'll press save. <clears throat> hopefully we're not, fr hopefully we're not freezing anymore. Um, it looks like my internet's back to being stable because I don't have a little signal saying it's not. So I've saved it. I'm going to close it. So now let's go to our normal text tool. You can use any of your text tools with this, but I'm just going to go ahead and type in uh, H-A-F. I don't think I got to my L's, did I? So I'm going to show you what happens if you don't have the characters for it. <laughs> if you go look for it, what did I call this? Facebook Live. So it'll be in alphabetical order. There it is. It'll have a C in front of it. Click it and apply. And as I said, I didn't have my L map, so it just basically skipped that. Um, what did I do? I'll do H-A-C-D, just so you can see. And it basically turns those into keyboard lettering. So um, that's how it works. Let me come answer a question on that one. So, Marsha, it, it depends on how the letters were named. Those letters were named something underscore A. That won't work. 
they all have, you have to name them A, B, C, D, and E. So usually what I do personally is when I download a font, I'll organize them into, these are my uppercase letters, these are my lowercase letters, these are my numbers, so that when I go to map them, I can simply, and, and make sure that they're all named A, B, C, D, E, and F. Then I'll go in and I can automatically map them. It doesn't take that long if you have to drag and drop, but when you're doing a Facebook Live, you don't necessarily want me to sit there and drag every single letter. So that's why I skipped a few. But what you need to keep in mind is that these are designs, not fonts. Even though you can use them as keyboard lettering now, they are still designs. So when you go to resize, you want to keep within that 20% range. Um, otherwise, they will not resize appropriately. You, you don't want to go it's it can recalculate to some degree but it's a certain point you may go too large especially if they're satin stitches if they're fill stitches like the ones that i just did those are fill stitches then you'll have you'll have very good luck with them okay let's go back oh judy i see your question how did i get my design back so i could see it um, I was zoomed in too far, so I used the minus zoom tool to zoom out that it, when I did the um, uh, the path text, my path landed way down here. And so all I had to do was zoom out because I was in this, this zoom so you guys could see it. Okay, let's see here. Now. And you can still use those tool, the same tools. So if you need to do adjust your spacing, those same tools are available to you here. So you can just take and drag them where you need them to go. All right, I'm going to delete that. And as I said last week, there are about 840 designs built in. I think um, you have applique shapes, backgrounds, borders, connectors, designs. These are more intricate designs, frames, monogram designer, the cores. And if you go back to last week, I'm pretty sure I did the monogram designer with you guys last week. The monogram designer frames are there as well as the split letter designs, two styles of split letters plus your numbers. So all of those are built in. This designs category is pretty cool. It's got some really nice designs in it. This program also allows you to remove elements. So if I wanted, let's say I just wanted the dragonflies here and not the green, I can simply select the green color in my sequence view window and delete it. And now I'm just left with my dragonflies. If you wanna see, take your dragonflies apart and you want to see which ones are which half you can basically kind of hold your shift key down sorry miss princess what are you telling me it's time for my girl came in and shook her head she must not be happy about something so i'm going to hold my shift key down and see if i can figure out where that ends oh see i'm still i'm in part oh there we go so that's the end of that design if I change that color, it's now its own separate dragonfly, basically, except for the pink. So I could come down here and grab, see what I can find for the center of this one. I'm guessing that's the end of my pink. Yep. So let's go ahead and change that to orange. So now they're still grouped. We can ungroup them. And then we can come in and grab the yellow and grab our pink, not pink, yellow and orange, and group those two together. Control G will group. And then you can just simply draw around this one. Oops, evidently I missed a, missed a piece. We'll group this one. And my stray little guy right there, I'll delete. So now you've got two different dragonflies that you can play around with and, mess, and manipulate them. Okay, how am I doing on time? We're okay. Now, um, what else can I do? Scan and cut integration. Import, import FCM. Pick your FCM file that you wanna use, open it, go to your tools tab and you can convert it to applique. That's how that one works. And now if you wanna make sure that your applique is going to match your cut file, 
I would then hit the scan and cut button again and send that back to my scan and cut. So that would be my preference. You guys can do whatever you want. You can bring, if you don't want to do a text applique, you can come in and bring in something else. Import FCM. Let me see here. Let's do this one. Um, I'm going to change the color of this guy to black, grab both parts, and convert it to applique. Now, you can remove overlaps. So if I come here, right mouse click and say remove overlap stitches, I'm going to take it down to zero because those are lines. Notice now that part of my um, line is gone. You can take parts out of a design and add it to this. So if you needed wings or, or something of that nature, you could do that. Or you can draw your own. Let's say we want to have a, a wing in here. I've got a line drawing tool. This is, um, keep in mind, I'm not a wing person here. I'll close my shape. That's about the saddest excuse of a, um, flamingo wing I've ever seen, but then you can actually convert it to applique. And if you want to change the color, if that's your thing, I'm going to delete this guy. But if you want to change the color of your applique, come here, choose color three, select the one that you want, choose color three, and now that's pink. So um, that's what we've got. Am I still cutting up, guys? Is it still breaking up? Because on my end, it's showing that I've good in, got it, good internet now. I So hopefully we're not. If not, I have no idea. Oh, nope, we're breaking up again. Well, there's no sense in me continuing this if you guys are not getting the full experience. I don't want to sit and waste your time and freeze and not freeze. We could try this again next Tuesday. Um, I truly, I mean, I'm, I'm down to one bar again. So, oh, YouTube is not having an issue? Huh. That's interesting. I don't know what to tell you. I, I'll do one last thing. Let's do word collage and then I'll, I'm will i going to call it a day just simply because I, I there's no sense. I don't know what to tell you. Word collage is on your tools tab. And what word collage does is allows you to pick a shape um, with BES Blue, you are limited to the shapes that are built in. You cannot add your own to it. But you select a design. You come in and you type in your words. I usually separate them by commas. And once you've got them in, press Generate. We Once again, we're back to good internet, so we'll see. This is any angle. You can choose, you can say, I only want you to do horizontal and verticals. Or you can add in diagonals. And you get different things. Now, it's going to randomly generate the words. And I can't say that enough. Randomly generate. Because if you find something you like, you'd better press OK and take it. Because you're not going to see it again for another 10 years. Because as I click generate, it continues to go. You can change your font styles. So let's say we want to go with girly curls. You get to select one font style in this one. Oh, well, evidently my computer decided to crash today as well. <clears throat> you just can't make this up live. It is what it is. What can I say? It's my day. Let's go back to our tools tab. Go back to our word collage. Grab that and try that again. Where hearts are in the H's, right? <laughs> we'll go with three words. I didn't like my girly curls, evidently. I'm going to go ahead and give it one more chance.
Okay. We'll say we love that one. Click OK, because I want to take you one step further. So you've got your word collage. What if you want to turn that outside area into an applique? You simply select it, click Convert to Applique Tools, Convert to Applique. There you go. So now you have an applique item. And you'll notice these are your three steps. So if you want to cut that out with your Scan and Cut, you simply press the Scan and Cut key, and it will actually turn it into a cut file for you. So it allows you to play and do some other things that you can't do in PE design at all. This is, a, so they've really done a nice job of adding things to us. You have a batch file converter. So if you have other brands of software, you can, um, not software, other brands of machines, you can convert those designs to it. This is not just brother specific. So if I wanted to save this out in a different format, Go up to your application key and choose save as. And then here's your list. You have a huge list of file formats that can that it can be saved to. OK. So um, that's what I would tell you. Uh, it's fun. It's sweet. It's a nice little program. It's fun to play with. I'm coming back over here and I suggest you have a good time with it. Now, I was going to answer some questions, but with the way the internet is, I'm not sure if that's going to work or not. Shirley, um, your question on creating, your taking the artwork that you did in my design center. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can answer that one for you. NP Design 11. Can you bring it in? You sure, sure can but you cannot take that into your decorative fill wizard. So if I open up the file that you sent me, I think it's on my desktop. Maybe I didn't save it. Hold on, I'll hold on, I'll open it up from my email. I'm not going to take you into the hard way to do this. I'm, we're going to go the easy way today because we are doing, we are having weird things. If you want to make this a repeating file, it, this will not be a decorative fill at this point because you have to create a decorative fill in the programmable stitch creator. But what you could do is choose the arrange copy tool and do a matrix copy change your spacing as tight as you can get it. So I would change it down to nothing, basically. Oops, not the not negative numbers, but go to zero. And then left click up at the top and drag it. And then left click where you want it to end. And you basically created an entire area of those designs. It is optimized the sewing order but you'll notice there's a lot of jumps going on there. I did take that file into the Stitch Creator program and made one, but it had jumps as well. I could not, I haven't figured out a way not to make it not jump. But yeah, that matrix copy tool will work for you. You could, um, let's see if we can optimize. Let me undo what I did. I'm pretty sure optimize is, are, is automatically selected. Yeah, I've got optimized sewing order. Let's go ahead and do, let's take that off and see what happens. Matrix copy. I'm going to take it back to zero. And left click, drag it down. And then left click at the end. So, yeah, it's, it, it doesn't have a, that, that's not really going to be an optimized guy because of the way it's created. But that's your easiest way of doing that. You select your hoop size and then just do you a matrix copy. Delete anything that you don't want. But you're going to have a lot of thread trims with this one. The, what I did was I took it into the programmable stitch creator. I took a picture of it basically and took it into my programmable stitch creator. Now I'm going to select, just draw a square and put in a decorative fill. So if I come in here and I grab the one that I picked, I did a couple of different ones to see if I got any different results. So where's the one with all of them? This is the one I want, the spools. 
I did a single spool. And I clicked OK. Then you can take the size down. But you'll notice there's at every the end of every line, there's going to be a jump up to the next line. So if I even though I tried to make them as there, there's still jumps. So it, it just <clears throat> You know, it just depends on what you're going for. Your easiest way would be to bring that in and just matrix copy it. Yes, you could certainly on the matrix copy, you, all you have to do is pick the designs. That, let's say you wanted that row to be um, red. You could change that row to red. So if I go back at, on this one, no. On her original, let me open that file back up. All right, so if I went in here and I did my matrix copy again. We'll go to zero for our spacing. Left click, drag it all the way across. Left click at the end. Control M, I'm going to move it to the middle. So if I wanted this row to be a different color, I could come and grab that row, change its color to whatever color I want it to be. And you could alternate. Oops. So every other row could be a different color if you wanted it to be. If you really wanted to go that route. So that that is the easiest way to do it. So go have fun. Have enjoy. Um, any other questions? No. I'm not seeing. Any. Let me go back up here. Besides freezing internet. Um, and surely go back and watch it because there there is a lot of information done on on the rotary auto blade earlier today. I'm looking to see not, that's frozen. <laughs> I'm don't see so. I'm looking just to see if there's any other questions I've missed. It does not appear to be. So, um, no, sure, surely you can't take it to my design center to link them. So, um, this is there. The, my design center and P Design don't commute. Don't talk to each other. So if you want them connected, you would need to copy them in my design center and paste them to, and just move them down below. You could fill an entire page in my design center on your machine, but you just don't have the all at once. But there is a copy tool on, in my design center where you could copy it and put it down below to where you could link them together. That would, you know, if you're concerned about that happening, then that's what I would do. So, um, Really, Marsha, um, not really. There, you can delete jump stitches, but it depends. It, it depends on what they lead to. You can't optimize the sewing order of something that somebody else has done. I would suggest that you don't purchase from that company again. So it, it depends on where the jump stitches are. If they're an integral part of the design, then you don't really want to take them out. Okay. All right, guys. Well, you all have a great rest of the day. Once again, sorry for the internet issues, but this one's beyond my control because I am hardwired and there is nothing else on in my house besides this. So don't know what to tell you. All right. You all have a great rest of the week. Please send in your questions so that we have something to talk about, but I'll try to pick up where I left off at the end next week after today. And if there's something that you wanted to see that I didn't show about BES Blue, then let me know. As I said, everything that I did today, you can do in BES 4 in, that I was doing in BES Blue. The last little section was in PE Design. So just so you know that. All right, guys, y'all have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.